Game Pass as a one-time designer and as a forever, for the most part, lover of this medium is a North Star for why the medium is about to quite possibly become even greater than it already is. And that's what this video is about because there's some news that happened today that really starts to bear out and prove out what I have been predicting, not that I'm some kind of seer, because this is an obvious prediction a lot of people are making, but news drops today, which we'll talk about in just a brief moment, that suggests that yes, the subscription services are actually going to be a revelation for gamers and will actually be great for the art of game design. So I wanna talk about that uh, and try to convince you not that it matters it's going to happen anyway but you know just at least that way when the when the future that's coming that i'm telling you is coming comes around you can say yeah no no i i always felt that way okay but by the way you're not the only one i had a i can't tell you the guy's name key developer very well known video game creator um and yeah he's just like doesn't this devalue i'm worried about these subservices it devalues the products we make and i was just like it does, but I think that's a good thing. It's like a baptism by fire. I think that's the right term, right? Where you throw the thing into the fire and all the, 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 the stuff you don't need, all the crap burns away and what you're left with is like the, the perfection or the diamond or whatever. I, I think people artificially value a lot of video games right now. Not all of them, of course, because the business model that we've been forced to sort of choke down all these years demands games be a certain way that I don't think is actually right for the medium. Okay, so I'll give you an example. So I'm talking to this guy and I'm like, look what the business model currently forces today's products to be. A lot of them are bloated with padding because you have to justify the price point. Uh, a lot of them are, especially as they get more expensive to be made, very inside a box and they, they barely you know they'll, they'll dip their big toe in the uh, you know across the line into innovation unless you're talking about rare cases like death stranding and then they'll kind of sneak back in right they're, they're they're getting more and more conservative at a level of like unique experiences as 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 per necessary right and one of the things people kind of talk about but in a weird backwards way is the completion rates of games. Data came out recently that the completion rate on Game Pass games is low compared to a game you purchase. And they were, I think they were saying, I don't know if this is accurate, but I saw this 5% completion rate of Psychonauts 2, which people say is a great game. I haven't played it yet. And people say, see, that's bad. That makes, that means subscription services are bad. People aren't playing as much. And I'm kind of like going, that's excellent. That's excellent. Right. Because, again, it's this artificial engagement because you've purchased it. Right. Think about that. Think about, you know, I, I had a guy online go, you know, coming at me about Netflix. He's like, well, Netflix, you know, you never finish anything. And I, I drop a bunch of stuff until I find something I really want to watch the whole thing. I'm like, that's not a bad thing. Right. That's a good thing. It only feels bad because you're used to a traditional business model where you've paid and you don't finish something. But no one's asking you to pay 60 bucks and you get bored in 20 minutes and move on. If you're thinking about this, if your completion rate of a game or a movie or a TV show is 5%, uh, and again, I'm not knocking Psychonauts 2, haven't played it here, it's phenomenal. But let's just, you know, I assume it would apply to almost anything in that system. If your completion rate of a game is 5%, that's not a problem with the subservice, that's a problem with the game. And all it will do is force more and more games to figure out why people are dropping and move towards design that is meant to engage from the beginning to the end. So the engagement goes up, the design gets better because of that, the bloat goes away, and thematically speaking, you have more interesting concepts because people are gonna try more things because why not? It's quote free on subservice, right? now. Forget video games and Netflix and Game Pass and Netflix or Luna and Netflix. People, it's not the same thing. Here's where I can guarantee you it is absolutely the same thing. Because uh, I know people get really upset when I compare the two because they're, this is interactive. They're, usually they're talking about streaming anyway and not subscription services. But in this case, here's where they are absolutely 100% uh, the same thing. So the quality will go up. Okay, and I'm going to show you some examples because I'm so tired of this line. People are like, well, Netflix makes crap. 
buddy, or buddy, or hey, buddy, I had a guy in high, I usually say it doesn't matter. This There's a guy in high school who just called buddy his buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter. His name was Scoot. Okay, let's move on. Um, so this uh, Netflix, right? ADD is real, folks. Netflix, um, people are like, oh, there's crap on there. Okay, we're in a golden age of television. And we're in a golden age of television. It was starting with things like AMC and, and, and premium cable that were competing in HBO that were competing with network television, but it has spilled over into things like Amazon, Netflix, Disney plus HBO max. These companies in order to keep people as they call from churning, I don't know why it's in quotes. It's a real word churning, churning from their services have to continually work their butts off to acquire and create content to keep you subscribing and keep you there versus the other guy, right? Look at the stuff. Now I'm not saying, saying some of the Netflix movies and some of the Hulu movies aren't crap. Sure, but that's everything. But look at what we've gotten since Netflix got into the market of creating original content. You know, I'm sorry, but you just don't enjoy linear media if you're looking at all of these movies that I'm putting up here and shows that I'm putting up here and you're acting like all, they, all these people make are crap, okay? Today in video games, we've arrived at a point where we're seeing the beginning, I think, of a similar situation, okay? Game Pass, for the longest time, has ruled the roost. They've had no competition, really. You had Luna, right? But Luna, which I loved the streaming aspect of it, I think it was probably better for me than Stadia was, and better than xCloud was in terms of the technology. Maybe I'm just closer to the server farm. I have no idea. But I loved it, and I subscribed to it. I canceled it, though, because as great as the service was at a technical level, they had nothing that I couldn't play anywhere else. And so I'm giving them five bucks a month. What's the point, right? Well, as you probably know, New World is their new MMO from Amazon, and it's not on Luna yet. And there's a reason, if you read the articles and stuff, a lot of it has to do with the kind of game it is. It's a high-input game. Certain devices are going to have a hard time with that, like phones or whatever. But they say there's a probability this will come to Luna and hopefully soon. Well, suddenly what's looking to be what is currently the biggest MMO in America or maybe even in the world, probably in America. I don't I don't know how it goes everywhere else yet is going to ultimately be probably should be an exclusive to Luna because Amazon has Luna and Amazon has New World, right? Well, suddenly there's a reason if you're into MMOs to at least try it. Like, I, I'm not going to spend 40 bucks on New World because I usually don't really play MMOs. But if I subscribe to Luna, I'm like, oh, people are talking about it. Fuck it. Let me give it a shot. Right. Boom. You're off to the races. Suddenly that five dollars towards to Amazon starts to make a little bit more sense. Right. Netflix today comes out and says, hey, we've acquired the company, the guys who make uh, and ladies who make oxen free. What are they called? Night school. OK. I didn't happen to love Oxen Free. I loved the thematic of it, but I, it was a lot of reading and, and, and text, and I wanted to play, and it was like, let's go through dialogue. But it's a beloved game. Now, it's not, you know, uh, you know for what they spent on it, it, was, it, it made its money back and, and a lot more. But, you know, it's not like we're talking about Halo on Game Pass. But again, Netflix bought them. Netflix is getting into games. Netflix will be streaming games. We don't know if Oxen Free 2 is going to be exclusive to Netflix or if it's going to be exclusive to Netflix for free and then you have to pay for it everywhere else. But you've got now Amazon competing with Game Pass. You've got Game Pass competing with uh, Netflix and Luna. There's no reason to believe that all of the great things that have occurred for subscription services for linear media will not be happening here. And I'm talking business model. Don't I'm not talking streaming and input and latency and all. I'm talking subscription-based services. Whether you download it or stream it is, is your own deal, okay? Different conversation, totally different issue. But talking about that subscription service model, and now that you have some competition, I don't know why people have a hard time seeing that this is going to be really, really good for games. And the excuse is always, well, yes, but once they get you in their back pocket, they're going to start doing microtransactions and they're going to start doing free to play and all this shit like mobile games. And I'm like, OK, then at that point, that's when you promptly cancel. Well, then it'll be too late because a bunch of the younger generation, like with Roblox and shit, and they're used to it. It's like, OK, but then that's progress. And there will always be a company out there willing to scoop up those games that used to be good. Uh, on Luna or Game Pass before it went to shit and make them 
things that you can purchase. Just, you know, there's always going to be that. And there will always be those companies as long as there's an audience for it. The budgets won't be as big. So if you're a production value guy, sorry, yeah, you're probably going to lose some of that for new games if that is what happens. Uh, and that these subscription services become free-to-play wastelands. But that's not happening right now. And if it does happen, you can still be served um, by, you know, buy a game, linear, narrative, all that stuff. It's just, you know, it won't be the main thing anymore. But that's how the business works. They go where the money is. And if the majority of players are spending the money on free-to-play wasteland, that's what they'll make. But that's not what we're seeing right now. What we're seeing is, especially if you compare it to Netflix and all that, you're seeing a competition that is driving up quality of product and is is demanding quality of product be better. Mandalorian episodes, Marvel uh, uh, television, you know, WandaVision, whatever... The, the, just the time, the duration of the episodes are whatever they need to be, right? They're not beholden to this. Well, you have to have X number of commercials, you know, per, per, per show. So right around that, they're like, no, this episode six of Mandalorian, the best story is told in 24 minutes. Episode eight of Mandalorian season one makes more sense to be 43 minutes. This is what we want, man. This is good for the medium. I'm sorry if you can't see it. No, no. Of course you can see it. You're capable of seeing it, most of you. You don't want to see it. Gamers stun me. Gamers, I always thought gamers were the technological kids, you know, and the, the ones that are forward thinking and the ones that are outside the box. I am stunned how gamers are so, you know, clutching their pearls and their games to their chest like don't change don't change don't change it's like man that's what this is you want the change better and better and better onward and upward i hope you're well uh i'll talk to you soon thanks